Hello everybody and welcome to the 2021-22 Charlton Athletic Summer Transfer Window Review. So we've got a lot to cover in this video, so we're not going to dilly-dally any further, we're just going to jump straight into this. So Charlton's transfer window kick-started with the return of a familiar face as we completed the permanent signing of Preston North End striker Jaden Stockley. Now I'm going to spend as little time talking about Stockley as physically possible as we all know what we've got with this sign and we know exactly what kind of player we have the second half of last season, should I say, on loan with the club. Eight goals, fantastic return at this level and of course he wanted to join the club permanently after the loan spell ended and we have managed to get the deal over the line. Paid a fee for him, three year contract and he is looking just as good as I remember him from last season. Scored two goals already this season. Looks a dominant threat in the air. We know exactly what we've got with this sign. And we know that he is going to be a menace this season. And is arguably one of the best strikers in this league. And could even argue that he's too good for this division. And then signing number two is, in my opinion, one of the better ones of our transfer window. And that, of course, was Portsmouth goalkeeper Craig McGillivray. And again... I think we all know what we've got with this player as well. Obviously, a very consistent performer for Portsmouth over the last few years. Won Portsmouth Player of the Year last year as well. And is arguably the best keeper in the division. This season, though, for Cholton, we have to say that he did start rather shaky. You could definitely see that... I don't really know what was wrong with him, to be honest with you. He just looked very shaky in the opening games. But in the game against Wigan, despite losing, and against Crewe, he showed why people call him the best keeper in the league. He's pulled off some phenomenal saves. And I know that over the course of a full season, we've got a bloody good keeper on our books. So yeah, I'm very happy with McGillivray coming in and on a free transfer as well. So you got to love that. Signing number three, though, has caused a lot of debate amongst the Charlton fan base. Some people like him, some people don't like him and don't really see him as a regular in the first team squad. And that is George Dobson. Now, Dobson is a bit like Marmite when it comes to the Charlton fans. As I say, some people like him, some people don't like him. Me, personally, I actually like him. I actually think he's been decent for us so far. He gets about the place, you know, he's not afraid to get stuck in. He puts in a couple tackles and he does seem like a bit of a work engine. Now, obviously, his time at Sunderland wasn't great to say the least and Sunderland fans didn't have very nice words to say about him but I took that with a pinch of salt because Sunderland said the same thing about Adam Matthews and he turned out to be all right didn't he with Dobson he fits our bill you know 23 years of age a defensive midfielder which we needed obviously we had Ben Watson as our only defensive midfielder at the time and we definitely needed the cover the two-year contract is a bit of a shame I thought we'd have got him on a longer term basis but nevertheless I'm optimistic with Dobson I think that he has impressed me somewhat in this uh, in the opening game so far. As I say, his workforce gets about, gets stuck in, and I like Dobson. And then following these three players joining the club, we then saw two departures. Following them deciding not to sign a new contract with the club, and that, of course, is goalkeeper Ben Amos and striker Chucks Anike. Both moved on following the expiration of their contracts. Ben Amos joining Wigan, Chucks Anike joining Birmingham. Ben Amos, 16 clean sheets over the course of the season is pretty decent, and he is a decent keeper. You know, he is a decent League One standard goalkeeper, but because we were interested in McGillivray at the time Amos was, you know, negotiating with a contract to join, to re sign with Charlton or eventually go to Wigan. I wasn't that fussed with Amos leaving because I knew full well that McGillivray would be an upgrade on him, especially from the fact that we got McGillivray on a free transfer. So in that sense, I wasn't that fussed with Amos leaving the club. But I do think we're going to have got a good League One keeper in their books. You know, he offers a lot of experience. Chucks and Ike, our top scorer last season, made the move to Birmingham City, reuniting with his former manager, Lee Bowyer. He was going to be a big miss for us. You know, 15 goals last season, top scorer last year, was such an impact off the bench, such a brute force, would just power through everybody, would dominate in the air, got a decent strike on him as well, scored a couple of good goals. And with Birmingham, they can definitely expect the same thing. You know, a decent impact player that's going to come off the bench and change the game. He scored a goal as well in their absolute demonition of Luton by five goals to nil. He scored the fifth goal in that one. So yeah, I wish Chuck saw the best of Birmingham because I think that he definitely can do it at championship level. And following those two players leaving the club, we saw an abundance of signings before we saw another departure. So signing number four was the return of another familiar face. And that of course was Akin Famuwo, who has rejoined the club on a season-long loan from Norwich City, like last season. However, unlike last season, 
we have the option to make this deal a permanent at the end of this spell, which I could not be happier with. He struck up a rather unlikely partnership with Ryan Innes, who of course joined the club in the summer of that year as well. And those two were just absolutely monstrous at the back. Six foot three defender Famuo, six foot five defender Innes. I've said it multiple times. But these guys, honestly, they were so, so good. Kept six clean sheets on the bounce. Obviously, Famuo was injury ravaged over the course of that season and he didn't play an awful lot of games last season. He obviously was in and out of injury. And when he did come back, apart from that mistake against Wimbledon, which ultimately cost us the three points away from home in Nigel Adkins' first game in charge, he didn't put a foot wrong and he was a very solid 7 to 8 out of 10 performer every single week. He was absolutely fantastic. And I knew straight away that when he left the club following the expiration of his loan back to Norwich, with Norwich in the Premier League, I knew that his minutes were going to be limited. So it was either a case of him going to the Championship or he returns to us. And he's come back to us and I couldn't be happier with that. you know. And obviously to have the option to make it a permanent, which I think we've got a very good chance of making it a permanent, regardless of what league we're in next season, whether we get promoted or not. And like George Dobson, signing number five again is a bit like Marmite when it comes to the Charlton fan base. As we saw the arrival, or should I say the return, of Sean Clare, who we signed from Oxford United for an undisclosed fee. Two-year contract again, which I was a little bit disappointed considering his age at only 24. I thought that we would have tied him down on a longer contract. Now, with Clare, obviously he came through the Charlton Academy, but never played a first-team minute. So he's gone full circle and he's now involved in the first-team squad. Now, with Clare, obviously he said in his interview that he is a number eight, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and I can see that. Although in the games that I have seen him play, he's not really stood out as like a you know starting 11 player. I kind of see him as like a good option to bring off the bench, as like a squad player sort of thing. I know a lot of Charlton fans don't like him, but I'm holding off judgment with Clare really as it is five games into the season. Obviously he has just come back from a knock as well after the MK Dons game, but he made an appearance against Crew Alexandra, only a 10 minute cameo. And I was impressed, I must say. It was a very, very impressive cameo. And of course, he did play in our Papa John's Trophy tie last night against Crawley Town, where we won 6-1, an absolute demolition. Our best home win since 1974 or something like that. And I believe Claire got two assists, so he done really, really well last night. And who knows, he could definitely reinstate his position in the starting eleven. Obviously, we have had a lot more players coming into the side. A lot more midfielders are in form, and we've obviously brought in a lot more in the transfer window, which we'll get onto later. But Claire is going to be under a bit of pressure to get back into the starting eleven. but I'm optimistic with him. Then after these five arrivals of Stockley, McGillivray, Dobson, Famwo and Claire was the beginning of the League One season. We went into the first game of the season against Sheffield Wednesday with just these five players joining the club. So our squad was very you know, thin boned, it was down to the barest of bones, you know, youth academy players had to make up the bench, you know, it wasn't exactly the greatest squad, our depth was non-existent to be honest with you, the starting 11 was good, but the bench definitely needed work and we needed to, you know, get some depth into the squad and it was a while before we signed another player after we signed Claire. But eventually we got one in and this one definitely has to go down as not only one of the best Cholton signings, but as one of the best signings in League One. As we completed the half a million pound signing of Crew Alexandra winger Charlie Kirk. This one has been in the works for quite some while. We did eventually get the deal done. And I am absolutely buzzing to have him in the squad. In the games that he has played, the games he has started anyway against Wigan and of course his former side crew, he has shown glimpses of his quality. You know, he's got a decent eye for goal. He's had very good chances in both of these games to get on the score sheet. And Although it hasn't come yet, I am very confident that goals and assists will come with him because he's had a fantastic spell at Crew Alexander. Obviously, was absolutely superb with them. League One last season, done very well. Six goals and eight assists, I want to say, last season in League One. So he had a very, he's just come off the back of a very impressive season. And for half a million pounds, I think we've done very well with this signing. And we know exactly what we're going to get from Kirk. And honestly, I cannot wait to see him over the course of a full season. After the arrival of Kirk, there was, again, a little bit of a delay before we signed another player. And then we eventually got one in not long after we played MK Dons. And I have to say, this one is by far the most controversial out of all of our signings. And that is Corey Blackett-Taylor. He has signed only a six-month contract. His deal with Charlton expires in January. And this one was met with a lot of 
you know, negativity from the Charlton fan base for two reasons. One, the club we signed him from and the circumstances of his departure from that club. And two, the length of the contract. Now, a lot of people were saying that Corey was released by Tranmere Rovers, obviously playing in League Two. However, to my understanding, Blackett Taylor was offered a contract from the club. He just refused to sign one, so he became a free agent. So you could technically class that as release, but personally, I see released as them not being offered a contract when, to my understanding, Corey was offered a contract. He just decided not to take one. Now, a lot of people were saying, you know, oh, why have we signed a Tranmere player? If this was under Roland, signing a Tranmere player on a six-month contract is unacceptable. And I'm just sat there like, I honestly could not care less where a player comes from. As long as they're good, and as long as the management and the recruitment team believes that he's good, that's fine by me, you know. And to be honest with you, a six-month contract is actually a smart move for the club, because it gives us you know, the chance to see whether Corey is good enough for this team. Obviously, it does add a little bit of pressure on Corey's shoulders as he has until January to deliver and has until January to perform and earn that contract, whether that is a, an extension to the end of the season or until the end of next season, we don't know. But it is up to him to deliver. And I don't understand why Charlton fans were just absolutely battering him, you know, just saying, oh, this is not a good signing at all. When the one thing that us fans need to do and the only thing we need to do is back him. We have to get behind him because he's already under that bit of pressure with him needing to deliver for the club. Otherwise, he could well be out of a job. He could well be without a club come January. And of course, he did score his first goal for the club in our 6-1 win last night over Crawley, which was a pretty decent finish. He did fall over during the build-up to it, but he managed to get himself up and fire away into the bottom corner. It was a bit like a FIFA goal. But regardless, it was his first goal of hopefully many in hopefully many games for this club. And I'm going to back him, and I think that every single Charlton fan has to back him. Obviously, it is much-needed cover, as we do have another wide man for the likes of Kirk and Jaisimi, another option off the bench. He's a very pacey player with a little bit of technicality about him, and his pace... It's almost frightening. Then following CBT's signing, there was once again another delay before we signed another player. As a matter of fact, I believe it was Thursday, the Thursday just gone, that we made our eighth signing of the transfer window. So we did leave it quite late, but then again, that is standard chart and we always leave it late. Eventually, after the CAFC hashtag imploding on a daily basis due to the club's disastrous start to the season and the team looking as bare-boned and as lacklusterous as it was, we eventually got in signing number eight and that was Luton Town attacking midfielder Elliot Lee, who joins the club on a season-long loan, follows in the footsteps of his dad, Rob Lee, of course, becoming the second father and son duo to play for Charlton behind Keith and Gavin Peacock. And I've got a good feeling about this one. I've got a very good feeling that Elliot Lee is going to be a big player for us. Obviously, his time at Luton in League 1 and 2 was absolutely fantastic. Didn't quite cut it at the Championship. Went out on loan to League 1 side Oxford United, where in 18 games, he got six goals and three assists, which averages a goal contribution every other game. So... He comes off the back of a decent season with Oxford and from what I've seen from him so far in the cameo that he made against Crewe and in the Papa John's Trophy game against Crawley, he looks bloody good. He looks very, very good. A technically good player, an attacking midfielder, a player, a player that we've badly needed and proper, proper number 10 because we've obviously played Albie Morgan in that position and he just hasn't worked because he isn't a number 10 and he plays a lot better in that deeper role. Lee came on against Crewe and he caught the attention of me. And of course, his goal last night against Crawley was just absolute filth. It was absolutely incredible. What a goal. Long ball over the top from Dobson. The touch was brilliant. The nutmeg was filthy. And the strike was just fantastic. You know, the bending it into the bottom corner, absolutely superb. And like I say, I've got a very, very good feeling about Lee. I think he's going to be a very good player for us. I just realised I've actually forgotten another departure that happened before that. So we'll discuss this departure now along with the player that left the club on deadline day. And the two that I'm referring to are, of course, Ashley Maynard Brewer and Wasim Alcheria. Ashley Maynard Brewer completed a season-long loan move to Ross County, whereas on deadline and on deadline day, Alcheria completed a three-month loan to National League side Aldershot Town. Now, starting with Maynard Brewer. Now, Maynard Brewer completed this move, I think, after Blackett Taylor signed or after Kirk signed. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe even before that. I'm not entirely sure. But... This one does slightly annoy me as Maynard Brewer has gone on loan to Ross County in the Scottish Premier League. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's actually played a game for them so far. He's basically just been sat on the bench, which 
let's face it, is exactly what he would have been doing at Charlton. The League Two side would have done him much better because I think that there are a couple of sides, or a, couple, a few sides, in fact, in League Two that I think Maynard Brewer should be getting into their team. But if we want him to be number one goalkeeper, if we want him to be the player that we hope he's going to be, and he's going to be the number one keeper for us one day, then he needs to play games. And he's not going to... And sending him to Scotland to sit on the bench isn't going to do him any good. So I am a little bit disappointed in that sense. And I do hope that Maynard Brewer does get games with Ross County. And as for Al Chiria, who of course left the club on deadline day, joining Aldershot Town on a three-month loan, it's the perfect move for both parties. It's a great move for him and it's a great move for the club because let's face it again, Al Chiria, as much as I would have liked him to be involved in the team this season, he was never going to. He was certainly never going to get minutes in the squad. So he needed to get some professional minutes under his belt. And I think Aldershot is a great move for him because I think he can definitely cut it at non-league level. Now we get into our signings on deadline day and my bloody God, have we pulled it out of the bag with this one that we needed a left back badly, a midfielder, another midfield option and another man up top, another striker. And after a few days of this player being linked with us, we finally got the deal done at half past four. We completed the season-long loan signing of Nottingham Forest midfielder Harry Arta. He has made his return to the club. He has gone full circle, obviously began his career with the club. And this is a bloody good signing at League One level. Obviously, he hasn't played a game since February, which is a bit of a concern. Although... He's obviously been at Nottingham Forest and is still being selected in the Republic of Ireland squad. So he's, it's not like he's not been training or anything. It's not like he's miles behind everybody else. He is still training. So we definitely have got, in my opinion anyway, a good player. A very, very good player at League One level. Obviously vastly experienced, 31 years of age. Had 10 brilliant years with Bournemouth. The season with Fulham in the Championship in 2019-20. And of course made the move to Forest where it hasn't really worked out for him. But at League One level... He could be very good. He could be a big player in the middle of the pitch. And our midfield now is absolutely stacked. Arta, and then you've got Watson, Albie Morgan, and then our new players, Dobson and Clare, Elliot Lee, and of course, not to mention, Alex Gilby and Jake Forstikaski are still to return from injury. So we have got a pretty stacked midfield, and there are some very good options in the middle of that park. But yeah, I am over the moon with Arta coming in. Central midfielder, stroke defensive midfielder, 31 offers a lot of experience and you take a look at that signing and think that he should be a regular in the first team 100% he should be a regular in the starting 11. From the links that I saw on deadline day it was clear that we were after a centre-back which I found rather interesting considering that we did already have four centre-backs in Famwo Innes Pierce and youth player Deji Alerway who has looked rather comfortable playing at this level obviously has come off the bench twice against MK Dons and Crew, and has looked very very good in the games he has played so I didn't necessarily think we needed a centre-back I felt we needed to sign a left-back quite badly now one did come out quite uh, I think just before the Crawley game and that was St Johnston centre-back Jason Kerr he was actually very close to joining Charlton I think he was actually in London ready to sign a contract and then out of nowhere Wigan come in with a 600k bid and they were the ones that ended up getting him so that is rather annoying in that sense but Charlton fans were saying that oh that's the story of our transfer window we've been outbid by Wigan not being funny 600k for a centre-back that let's face it there's no guarantee that he's going to be playing ahead of Innes and Famuo is ludicrous and there is absolutely no way that we were going to be able to pay that sort of figure nor would it have been sensible the second player that we were linked with was the one that we ended up getting it was confirmed that this guy was set to go down to london to complete his medical and just before the deadline we managed to get him in we completed the permanent signing of morecambe center back and captain sam lavelle he joins the club on a three-year contract the 24 year old joining the club for a fee that is supposedly around just over a 200k. He was Morecambe's captain, so he's a leader, which obviously is a very good thing to have as a centre-back, a good option to have. 24 years of age, a promotion under his belt from League 2 last season, and is another option to bring off the bench. Obviously a right-sided defender, obviously a good option to have with Ryan Innes being Ryan Innes. Obviously we need to make sure that we manage his minutes well, and we need to make sure that he stays fit. And Lavelle is a good player to have off the bench. But I am a bit weirded out with this one, considering that 
I'm going to spoil it right now. We didn't sign a left back. We did not sign a left back in this transfer window. Obviously, there's still the free agent market. We could still sign one. But I was rather shocked and surprised to see that we were in the market for a centre back as opposed to a left back. And as I said, we had Deji Alleraway already as our fourth choice defender. And I do feel sorry for him with Lavelle coming in because I felt that Alleraway looks rather comfortable at this level. I felt that he was definitely capable of being our fourth choice defender. However, I will not complain with us bringing in a senior option who is a captain of a current League One side, 24 years of age. It's a pretty good option to bring off the bench. And our defensive options now, Innis, Famwo, Pierce, and now Lavelle, it looks pretty good. It does look pretty decent. As I say, I don't know all too much about Lavelle, but from what I've heard from Morecambe fans, they were absolutely gutted to see him go. They've said that, obviously, he's a leader, very commanding, very physical, a decent, talented defender, which is obviously what we want to hear, really. It's a good option that we've now got on the bench. And obviously, Innis is currently struggling with a knock at the moment. I don't know how serious it is. So Lavelle could actually get minutes very, very soon. And I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Now, after Lavelle made his move across to SE7, I was under the impression, as a matter of fact, many Charlton fans were under the impression that Lavelle was going to be the final signing. And we were still very short in a number of areas. Obviously, we didn't end up signing a left back. We are short in that position. And we were also short, in my opinion, of another striker. And again, we were linked with a striker on deadline day. So it was very clear that we were in the market for one. The player in question was Will Grigg. Rather quickly, it has to be said, a journalist did confirm that Cholton pulled out of the race for Grigg and he obviously went on to sign for Rotherham on a season-long loan. He's bagged everywhere else apart from Sunderland. So I felt that under Adkins, he could have been a good signing for us, but of course we missed out on him. And I was under the impression that Lavelle was going to be our final deadline day business. We'd get Arta done, we'd get Lavelle done, who are two good bits of business, but we were still short in areas until the absolute hero, the beautiful man that is Richard Corley, came out and said that there is another. There is another player that we are after. And Pete O'Rourke confirmed it, said that this guy looks set to be the player that we bring in, and he was. And, oh my God, I am absolutely buzzing with this one. It's come out of nowhere. The Cholton fans were just taken completely by surprise with this one. And I am so happy to see this guy in a Charlton shirt, or should I say, back in a Charlton shirt, as we have completed the season-long loan signing, the return of Jonathan Lecco. He is back in a Charlton shirt on a season-long loan from Birmingham City, and I could not be happier. Despite us not signing a left-back, despite me thinking that a left-back was probably the main priority as opposed to a striker... Jesus Christ, we've hit the jackpot with this one. And deadline day was just an incredible day. Probably one of the best deadline days this club has ever had for a very long time. And I am so happy to see Lecco back in a Charlton shirt. We needed a striker, another player similar to Washington. Someone that can latch onto Stockley's headers. And I think we found the perfect man. We know what sort of player he is from his time with the club back in 2019-20. His pace was electrifying. He's got some technicality about him. Scored Five goals and four assists, I want to say, before he suffered that unfortunate ACL injury. Has endured quite a difficult spell with Birmingham thus far. They were looking to send him out on loan. And it is Cholton that have snapped him up once again for a second spell. He's got unfinished business with us, man. He has got unfinished business. And he looks raring to go. He looks very, very happy to be here, which is exactly what we want. I know full well that he's going to frustrate me a couple of times. Because he was a very frustrating player when he was with us previously. However... After his injury, it was clear during that season that we missed him badly. We missed his pace. We missed his trickery. We missed his desire to take players on. Although, as I say, he frustrated me a number of times. But I think that he was a player that we missed. And I think that at League One level, this is an exceptional signing. And I think that he could definitely hit the ground running under Adkins. I don't know what position Adkins is going to play him as because I think he was naturally a winger when we signed him, but Bowie had decided to play him as a striker and I think he still is playing him as a striker at Birmingham, or did, should I say. So I don't know how Adkins is going to play him. Obviously, with Kirk, Jaisimi and Blackett Taylor already out wide and obviously up front, Stockley, Washington, Davison and then where's Wally in Ronnie Schwartz. We have got competition in these positions. So it's going to be interesting to see where Adkins decides to play Lecco. But regardless of where he decides to play him, I think Lecco is going to be an absolute diamond. Apart from us not signing a left back, 
we have done very well. We have done very, very well. An 8 to a 9 out of 10 transfer window, in my opinion. Seriously. Our midfield looks stacked. Defensive options looks decent. Apart from a left-back, as I say, having Chris Gunter at left-back is going to be a pain. We'll trust Adkins. We'll trust his judgment. He does seem to be chancing it with Purrington. He better stay fit. Our attacking options look very tasty indeed. There's a lot of pace. There's a lot of technicality. There's a lot of trickery. And I see a lot of goals in that attack. And we've got, obviously, a very good goalkeeper as well in McGillivray. I think we've built a pretty good squad on our hands. It's been a very good window. And I am very, very, very excited to see these boys in action. And I can't wait for the next game, as I say. I cannot, cannot wait. So, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of when I post. Let's get talking. What did you guys think about our transfer window? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think we've done well? Do you think we could still strengthen in some areas? Or do you think it's been an absolute disaster? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Rollington. Have a nice day. And I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll see you all later. <sighs> and breathe.